world building is a design and storytelling practice. It's a space that, to my mind, just is about stimulating curiosity. Unlike a linear scripted path with a, with a defined ending, it takes the inceptive idea and seeds it in a world space from which stories evolve in surprising and stimulating ways. While it was first used to define multiplayer game space, and now it's pervasive in film and television and throughout entertainment media, it's now evolving to have a powerful effect in the real world. We began this way of thinking uh, with Minority Report. But it wasn't anything very clever or magical on our part. It was really just about deep research with a different kind of context. With Minority Report, there was no script at the beginning of the film. And we were kind of forced into this development of a world in order to allow the story a kind of container, a container narrative uh, within which to evolve. And out of this came some, some theories, I think, that still apply. The design of a world precedes the telling of a story. The world becomes a container for narrative. Stories emerge logically and organically. Um, and world building stimulates emergent technologies and sculpts the imagination into existence. So to um, kind of dive into that just with a single example, this was, it started off kind of as an urban planning exercise. You know, what would Washington DC in 2050 look like if there was a massive influx of population because they wanted the protection of the precogs in a murder-free society. Um, we imagined a vertical city kind of evolving very rapidly and a kind of infrastructure that took place on several layers, a kind of stratification. We developed this uh, cyclopedia, this kind of Bible of the world, that started off with a very horizontal, very broad view. So looking at what we could intuit and, and develop in, in, in discussion with uh, corporations with, with universities, with domain experts of all sorts. What would the future of advertising look like? What would the future of, of clothing look like? How might architecture evolve? Um, what might media look like, journalism? We would just saw the very first examples of e-ink, a little two-inch square at MIT um, at the time, and kind of extrapolated uh, a, a, a um, flexible reading material that could change. Um, and, and up, to, up to the moment. Um, and we looked at transportation. So um, one of the processes here, looking at the horizontal world, is then to take these vertical core, slice, core samples, sort of slice through that. Um, so looking at transportation, how would Tom Cruise get to work in the morning from his living very high up in the upper city? Uh, and so we kind of just moved forward with a prototyping exercise. What would a vehicle have to look like that needed to travel vertically and horizontally, a kind of maglev surface that would support it? Um, and the design of the vehicle came directly out of that um, investigation. And then we did a shared design process of pushing that design from the, from the, design, from the 3D designs in the art department in the design space first out to everything from illustrations, the prototyping, 3D prototyping to get the approvals from the director, and then finally into the manufacturing for the actual film itself and into visual effects. Um, but what was most interesting, I think, out of this was that the narrative itself followed the design of the world. So this previs, this visualization, which resembles the final film very closely because Steven Spielberg actually was directing the prototype rather than the film in this, in this section for the first time, but the, the real outcome here is that a story emerged that would not have come from a typewriter and a small bungalow in, in uh, you know, Burbank um, that really came directly out of the fabric of the world. And, and that seemed an um, important uh, thing to start building on. What also uh, was apparent is that as we started looking at technologies for the future, we started creating a design fiction. So the Tom Cruise gesture recognition, which is well known, actually very quickly within a couple of years evolved with the scientist who was our in-house scientist who pro proposed this into a real um, working technology of gesture recognition called G-Speak and is now a 60-person startup in Los Angeles. So it was also interesting to see the power of storytelling to actually essentially create the future out of something that, that just didn't exist at all. This is a real-world project for three Bedouin tribes in Saudi Arabia. Right now, it is just broken ground. There's one model home. 
Our task here was not to design the space. Um, there was a team of architects and agriculturists and all sorts of people working in this. But our job as world builders was to visualize ways in which the tribes themselves, the Bedouin people, could become stakeholders and really invest in this uh, precognitive view of the future. So it's both a day in the life kind of narrative, but it's also an educational space. It's built on a game engine. It's interactive. This is showing the way water from the daily prayers is pulled through the house to cool it. We're imagining that this is taking place on the one day every three years, uh, the one day in three years that it rains. Um, and starting to look at the way that uh, sustainable agriculture might evolve um, if the tribes take on the, the task of building out the, this, this world. So this is a project that is being supported by the Saudi royal family as a foundation called the Al-Baida Foundation for this Al-Baida village. The people have started building these swales and these rock capture zones uh, where that flash flood would have washed away the village every time it, it rained. Um, it now captures the, uh, the water and regenerates the soil and plants grow that supply you know, food and materials. New agriculture evolves. Uh, but mostly when this was shown to the 200 or so uh, women who weave in the village, their reaction was, let's get started. You know? And that's really the job of this. If you can um, in a very powerful way show a future that's based in a very uh, rich knowledge of the culture um, that is shown to be feasible and to be executable, uh, then, then people can, um, can take that on. And so world building becomes very powerful. So why is world building important to us um, today? I'd suggest that it is the design space for us in the future, that we designers need to seize hold of the entire world space of media and technology, whether it's entertainment media, education, uh, sustainable futures, urban planning, space exploration. We have an entirely new toolkit of media and technology um, and new narrative capabilities to create our own future.